Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have back Debbie Adams, and she has her own podcast on our show, and she is part of our podcast community, and she is an amazing Christian faith-based author, and she has come out with a series of books, and they're amazing. And today she wants to talk about miracles, how miracles enter our lives, and how things just happen for a reason. She has some really amazing things to talk about and stories to tell that will touch your life and maybe open your heart to look at life in a different perspective. So Debbie, why don't you take it away, and let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, Stacey. It's so good to be back again. And um, I realize that there are miracles in our lives every day that we might not even be aware of. And I mean, how many times do you see a car run a red light and you were there fooling with your radio? So you did immediately, you know, yeah. go when the light turned green. I mean, just little things like that. But my miracles I want to talk about is... Um, 15 years ago, I was going to church. I was very involved in church and, you know, I was um, singing in the choir, reading my Bible, doing everything that a faithful Christian does. Not that I, I'm not saying I was perfect. Nobody is perfect but God, but I was doing everything that I normally did, you know, I have a, I have a good family and then I go to the doctor and, you know, had, hadn't had any problems in the past. And she says, I'm going to send you for an ultrasound. Well, that immediately made me, um, kind of fearful. Yeah. And so God put in my heart, he, he's like, there's no reason to be fearful. And he knew, you know, he know he knows our hearts. And so he knew I was being fearful. He said, there's no reason to be fearful. He said, it's going to be okay. And, and then, but us as humans, when something different happens or something is going to happen, we're not sure what is going to happen. We get fearful. Yeah. But like, my all of my books that I've written, it's about the faithfulness of God. And we should be faithful to God, but know that God is also faithful to us. Right. And so when I went and did my ultrasound, they said that I had stage one um breast cancer. Mm. And so then I then I thought, oh boy, uh, you know, because my aunt had already had um breast cancer, I think uh, maybe three years earlier. And I had watched her go through chemotherapy and all the sicknesses and things that go with that. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I, got, you know, go to a surgeon, meet with a surgeon, all, you know, the process of all the doctor stuff. I won't go into all of that. Yeah. And so long story short, though, I didn't have to have chemo. Thank, thank the Lord. I just had yeah. to have radiation. Okay. And. It, and God put such a peace in my heart through all of this. And, you know, normally when you're going through cancer treatments, you know, you're, you're not happy. You're not, you just, you know, are wondering what the end result is going to be. Right. And so um, the, the little texts that were doing my radiation, when they were put the little, um, St uh, sticker things on me that they had to put on there you know and even when I walked in the door they would always say why are you always smiling because I mean I mean I've always no matter you know growing up and you know even now I'm always smiling that's just my personality I'm a yeah. happy go lucky person and right. um and so but you know, even going through cancer, I was still smiling. And right. so I'd always tell them, I'm like, why wouldn't you smile? I said, I have Jesus on my side. Yeah. And, you know, I went through all of that. And um, so now when you finish um, radiation or chemo, they let you ring the bell because my mom got cancer. So she had to ring the bell, but I didn't get to ring the bell. Mm -hmm. But um, they did give me a little charm. And it was the little angel. And so I still have that for today. 
But I look at that as a miracle of God because it could have been so much worse. Yes. It was something that I couldn't, you know, how you women are taught, you know, to always test yourself, check yourself out. Yeah. It was it was so small that it was something that I couldn't find myself. It took a doctor knowing what they know to find that something was wrong. Right. And had she not sent me for that ultrasound, I don't know. Only God knows what would have happened. Right. But I'm thankful to God that she did. And I'm thankful to God that it was minimal cancer and Praise God today. I am 15 years cancer free. All right. And now, let, let me see. No, this year, this November, it will be 16 years cancer Woo! free. Yeah. 16. Yes. Yes. And so um, that is the reason behind my second book, Divine Promises. Because I want everyone to see that whether it's cancer, whether it's death, whether it's heart issues, whatever you're going through, whether it's physical, yeah. mental, mental, emotional, whatever, God will always be there with you. Oh, yeah. And the Divine Promises book is I've got 10 promises of God and he's got there's like maybe 8000 in his word. Yeah. And I took 10 that I thought applied to my life and all the life circumstances that I went through. And during that time when I was going through cancer, at the end of my um, treatments, I lost my job. It was it, it was attempt to hire and um, they put me on part-time so I could do my treatments in the afternoon. I worked in the morning. So after that was all over, they decided um, not to bring me on full-time. So I lost that job. And then after that, my husband decided um, to end our marriage. So for two years straight, I had something going on. I mean, I, talking about being in the valley I was in the valley it was always something going on for two years straight and it came to a point where I was like what is going to happen next right and but I did you know I talked about my bubbly personality and that was a time where I did sort of get kind of de depressed kind of down the, I feel I know now the devil was trying to knock me down. Yeah. And but God did raise me back up and I found the peace and joy, you know, that that I was there anyway. I mean, he right. was I feel like he was carrying me through this time. Yeah. And um, so I raised back up and, you know, I go on with life. And then about, you know, everything's going good. I found a new husband and I call him my Prince Charming. He, he's, he's the greatest. I mean, he's a whole lot older than me, but, you know, he's the best. And anyone that would bring a red rose on a first date, <laughs> <laughs> that's got to be a God sent man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, and I consider that a miracle as well. And yeah. So, um, I guess about three years ago, you know, um, everything was fine, you know, got a new marriage, you still going to church, you know, being faithful to God and God spoke to my heart and he said, you have a testimony to tell, which that's what I'm telling today. You can see I do. Yeah. And, um, he said, I want you to tell your testimony and put it on Amazon. And so, I mean, it was as clear as day, him telling me that. And, you know, I didn't immediately just go, it's like, oh, okay, let's go write it and put, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, no, I can't do that. And then, you know, it was, it was around the first of the year. This was in 2021. This was around the first of the year. Yeah. And um, so I guess midway through the year, I did write an ebook. And then I found somebody, um, cause I didn't know anything about 
you know, putting an ebook on Amazon or, yeah. you know, I just wrote my thoughts basically is what I did. Right. And so I um, found somebody that could put that in the right format right. and um, upload it as an ebook on Amazon. And God gave me the title um, because the, the words ring the bell, like I was talking about earlier when you finished cancer yeah. treatment ring the bell keep, kept ringing in my head. And so I'm like, okay, that needs to be the title apparently. Yeah. And so that that's what I named it. And so that, you know, and I thought, okay, I've shared my testimony, you know, that, that's enough. So that was 2021. And then, um, and um, I say in 2022, I was, um, God spoke to my heart again, and he told me that I needed to write a print book. I've got several friends that are authors and um, a few more now. Um, And so, you know, I would always go buy their books. You know, I would support them, go to book signings, you know, anything I could do. Right. And so, but when God told me I needed to write one, I mean, now that was a different story. Yeah. (laughs) And and so, you know, it, God is our heavenly father and, we, you know, we have a, a earthly father and then we have a heavenly father. Yeah. And, you know, even with our earthly fathers, you know, sometimes when they tell us to do stuff, you know, we'll come back with, oh, but, you know, I don't really want to do, I don't really want to clean my room, you know, stuff like that. And, and same thing with God, our heavenly father. And so I came back to him and I was like, um write a book are you serious <laughs> <laughs> it is like that requires a whole lot more than the ebook I had published last year on yeah. Amazon and so um that was in 2022 and but let me back up a few years um back in 2020 when all the COVID stuff was going on, a friend of mine found this lady on Facebook that was talking, you know, political stuff, what was going on. And she told me, you know, said, Hey, you need to follow this person. And, and she, and she, she said, her name is Michelle Mora Winder. And she is tells the, you know, really good stuff about what's going on in the world right now. Yeah. So I started following her. And so about 2022, she um, gives this book club online um, on Zoom. And so, you know, I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. Not really thinking that God was directing me that way. Yeah. And I thought, you know, that this is very interesting. And her book was Rock Your Red Carpet, which is, you know, having a healthy lifestyle. And, yeah. you know, she, and she gave, you know, um, little uh, tidbits, you know, on in the club book club on how to, how to do that what you need to change in your life and how you can do things different that you're already doing right and so I took the book club and really enjoyed it and then she talked about having a retreat for all the book club members mm-hmm. so we had this private um club and we're not club not private club but this p- private group in on on Facebook and um those were the people that were in the book club and so those were the ones that she um asked first if they want to go to the retreat yeah so she she had put it she had put a comment she sent me a message and she said I hope you'll think about coming to the retreat I'm going to have and so you know you're nice to people you don't really know you've never met you know it's like okay I'll think about it you know which is like yeah I will think about it and so then she um announced when it was going to be and it was it was in May of 2022 and um she said that she felt like there were a lot of people that wanted to write a book and didn't know how so right. she was going to give her a book club on the basics on how to write a book. How do you start? You know, what exactly do you do? And so, um, you know, when that announced and God's pricking my heart again, he's like, see, you asked me to show you how there it is right there. Right. So it's like, OK, yes, I get that. She's going to give a retreat on how to write a book. 
I said, but God, I don't have that much money. I said, I'm going to have to pay for the retreat. I'm going to have to pay for an airplane ride plus a hotel room. I'm going to have to go by myself because my husband sure isn't going to California with me. (laughs) (laughs) And I never, I'd never been anywhere by myself. It's always been with him. And so um, he, you know, I tossed the idea back and forth, you know, for, I guess, several days. And he kept coming back. It's like, you have the money. You have the money. I gave you the money, you know. And he and he's like, remember that? Remember that check that you got just, you know, out of the blue, you know, there's your money. And so mm-hmm. I'm like, well, yeah, I guess that's true. And it's like, and then I was talking to my, my good friend at work, you know, and she kept yeah. saying, you need to go, you need to go because she had read my ebook yeah. and he's like, you need to go. This is, this would be great for you. He said, you will regret this if you do not go. And I explained to her, you know, about, I don't know how to get around airports by myself, you know, right. and everything. And she's like, just follow the people. They will lead you where you need to go. <laughs> <laughs> And so um, she, um, so, you know, she convinced me and then, you know, I went home and, and, um, you know, um, messaged uh, Michelle Winder and told her, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I'm sending your money, um, you know, I want to go. And then I checked out all the, um, she had hotels suggested for all of us. And so I checked out which one would be best for me. So I got me a hotel. And then I, you know, had to do the task of finding an airplane trip there, you know, and I I mean, that, that was no problem because I'd found, you know, I've done that before when me and my husband were going somewhere. Right. That that was no big deal. But the prices were, uh, you know, to go into California, though, were a little more expensive than I I expect, um, more than I expected, but it was still okay. Because I felt God was God was in this, and so then came the day for me to get on the get on the airplane, and so I was kind of nervous. And you know, the Nashville airport, I'd been through it a million times, no mm-hmm. big deal. But then when I got to, uh, I went to the San Diego airport. When I got off at the San Diego, I was supposed to meet an Uber driver, and and I was like, okay, mm-hmm. so where do I go now? Yeah. And, and so I had to ask somebody how to get to where I needed because they pick up at a different spot than just the normal, you know, pickups. Yeah. And so I had to go over this little, um, uh, like a, I'll call it a bridge. It's not a bridge, but it was thing that actually went over the road that you walk over to get to the next road. Yeah. And that that's where it's going to pick me up at. And so, but the airplane ride there, it was peaceful. I felt the peace of God all in my life. Yeah. And, you know, I even told her when I got there, her and her husband is like, this is my first airplane ride by myself. And, I, and the, you know, we, and then, you know, I did the retreat and, and everything, you know, it was, it was great. I mean, she went over, you know, what, um, topics you need to start off with as a new author because you're unknown yeah. and she you know she talked about how you create how you find your chapter titles how you create your chapters and you know just the basics and she did yeah. a little bit of marketing so um, I guess I can consider myself um, Michelle Winder's uh, success story <laughs> <laughs> because I think I'm actually the only one in that group that actually has three books that are bestsellers. Oh, wow. And yes, yes. And there are two more that have written books. And one um, that I become friends with from there um, lives lives in Georgia. I live in Tennessee. She lives in Georgia. And um, she started writing a book, but she hasn't finished her. But she's had a lot of, a lot of life experiences going on in between those. So, but. Right. You know, I still try to encourage her. You know, it's like you got to get back on that book. You got to get back on your book. Yeah. But I believe that the miracle in that story is that God told me his plan for my life. He wanted me to be an author. And I was coming back with, oh, that's nice, but 
I have no idea how to do that. Mm -hmm. So he inserts Michelle Moore Winder into the picture. And, you know, she gives all of this amazing information. And then I come back home and I do write the book and um, I start writing it um, there. And so I come back home and I finish writing it and I'm halfway through. I wanted it to be because we had the retreat in May and then yeah. it took it took me two months to write it because I um, start really got into it in June, July. Yeah. And I wanted it to be published on my birthday in August. And so I had gotten sick at the end of July and I was mad at myself because I was so sick. I didn't feel like writing. Yeah. <laughs> And so, and, but it did get published right before the day before my birthday. So, yeah. you know, I was happy about that. And so I was like, okay, I'm done. I have done the ebook. I have done, wrote, written my testimony. And I was, I was like, God, thank you mm -hmm. for telling me that, you know, I needed to do that. Right. So now, now I am finished, you know, doing that. I can go on with back to my normal life. And God says, back up. No, you're not. <laughs> 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 he says, I have another book for you to write. And so that's where divine. Well, I didn't tell you the name of my first book was unlocking the code to bliss. And so, and then the second book is, um, divine promises and I not only use my cancer story I use my cancer story and my job loss and several other stories and I have a tornado story and I use all of those experiences and relate them to a definite promise in God's word right. and show the readers how as I was going through this situation, this promise right here was true to me. Right. And this, this promise, and this shows how God was faithful to me, mm -hmm. it, you know, in no matter what. And my favorite promise is the one where God says he will never leave you nor forsake you. That's mm -hmm. my favorite promise of all time. And, and I still hold true to that today because I know we as humans, we are not faithful, you know, to other people. We'll say we'll do something and something will come up and right. or we'll change our mind. And but God, he never changes his mind. He's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. And, um, you know, I was raised that way. I was raised going to church. And as a child, I didn't really think that much about it. You know, it was like, yeah, you know, go to church, go to Sunday school, you know. And, um, you know, you do vacation Bible school, have fun times, you know, with everybody at church. Mm -hmm. But as I became an adult, that's when God became more real to me, I think. Right. Yeah. And I was more obvious to the miracles that he was doing in my life. Right. And I'm sure he did plenty when I was a child, but... I saw them more, I think, as I became an adult, because I think a lot of times we go through life and things happen and we just say, oh, that was just a coincidence that that happened. Right. But I don't know about you, but I don't really believe in coincidence. Yeah, no, it, I don't either. It's, I mean, it's, it's a God, it's always a God thing. And um, one of my um, um, favorite phrases is but God mm -hmm. and I've got a hat that uh, one, of, one of my friends did for me and it says but God <laughs> and and I use that phrase a lot because it's like but God where would you be you mm -hmm. know but God if I hadn't listened to him where would I be right now I wouldn't be writing books. I can almost guarantee you that. I, but I would be some other direction that not in his will. And so, you know, that's that's two of my favorite things. Um, and getting back to when I had my cancer, he gave me the Bible verse, um, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Um Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding and he will direct your path. Yeah. And that has become 
my life verse because no matter what path in life we are going through, God is always there. He is He is there before we get there. Right. Because just like my cancer, I mean, he knew before I even got the diagnosis. Right. I was going to get it. That was what was going to happen. And so I just want the reason for, I mean, for this topic today, the reason that I want everyone to see is no matter what you're going through, look around, um, pay attention to your scenery because there are miracles everywhere. Yes. And uh, one of my um, situations that I talked about in my divine promises book was that I went through a tornado and my husband, my husband at that time, what had taken my car to go get the oil change and tornado was coming. So he was stuck at the car place. So I was there with my two dogs and my cat. And so it started getting dark outside. And so uh, somebody had called me and said, there's a tornado, uh, you know, coming said, you you know, you need to um, take shelter. And so you know, I'd never been in a tornado before, so I didn't know what to do, but we had this big, huge walk-in closet. So I got all my um, fur babies and put them in the closet and, you know, a pillow, blanket, my Bible, you know, and radio so I could hear, you know, the weather. And um, then afterwards, at, uh, well, when, when the tornado was going over, yeah, it sounded like a freight train, and that's how I knew the tornado was on top of my house because I'd heard people say it sounds like a train. Yes. Oh wow! It was, it was right. I heard it, and my cat. To I still have my cat, and my cat to this day, when it's really, really bad storming, she gets that freaky look in her eyes, <laughs> and so I'm sure she remembers it. <laughs> yeah, they don't forget. And, no, and so when it was over, and my husband came home. And so we were outside talking to our neighbor and he's one of the people that our neighbors, one of the people like standing outside looking at a tornado, you know, as it's coming. Mm-hmm. And he, and he told me and my husband, he said, the tornado was sitting on top of your roof. And then, yes. And oh then God. all of a sudden it just took off and went a different direction. Oh, wow. Yes. And so, but God, <laughs> That's all I can say to that. Yeah. And so I don't think I used, but God back then, but you know, I did tell him that was God. That was God's hand moving it. And, you know, I have, I have a lot of miracles that have happened in my life that, you know, I could talk about, but I'm not, it would be here today if I did. (laughs) (laughs) But I have just been thinking recently, you know, the way the world is today, People are getting to where they don't appreciate what they have. They don't yeah. appreciate the goodness of God, the blessings of God, whether they're Christian or non-Christian. I right. mean, we don't appreciate anything we have. And so that's why I'm going to talk specifically about miracles today. Yeah. And um, and then my last book that was um, launched in um, February and that one is straighten your crown. You know, I don't know if you I can see it. it. Yeah, okay, okay. And so straighten your crown. And so God spoke to my heart again not long after I launched the divine promises about yeah. a few months later. And he told me that that one needed to be launched in February. Mm-hmm. And so this was, I think, back in September of last year. And when he told me that, and so um, my aunt, who I was really close to, had um, had went on to um, heaven um, um, about a year and a half ago now. And so her birthday is in February. And so that's why that needed to be launched in February. And, And so it talks about your heart. Right. And straighten your crown. When most people think about a crown, they think about the crown. Yeah, the crown on your head. Head. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like the queen of England, you know, the prince and princesses and all of that. Yeah. But it's the crown in your heart. It's the e emotions in your heart that you put in there every day. Right. And when you have bad feelings, bad attitudes, your crown isn't sitting on your heart the way right. it should. Yeah. And when you have all the bad stuff, you know, it kind of goes sideways. And, yeah. um, and so that's why I think God wanted me to write that because as I was writing that, you know, I got to thinking it's like, you know, he was talking to me as I was writing it because a lot of times I've had, you know, bad stuff going into my heart. I think like yeah. the last um, time we talked, I talked about unforgiveness and right. that was, that was a bad one in my heart. And it took me a long time to get rid of that one. Yeah. But you know, we need to find a balance and that, that's what that book talks about, how to find that balance to get your heart to where it needs to be, to where it is pure, where it is compassionate, where it is loving, where you show your love to others. Yeah. And so um, that it and he's our God is already been speaking to my heart about another book. I have three ideas in my head, so I don't know which direction he's going to want me to go, but, right. um, so, you know, he, he's got to do another miracle. I'm sure somewhere along the road. Yeah. And, um, so that is, that is my testimony of all of my miracles through the majority of my adult life so far. I think that's amazing. That is an amazing story. You know, I find it so wonderful when people go through things in life and they don't just give up or they don't go into depression and they don't feel sorry for themselves. What you did is you you went through something, it gave you resilience, and then you took that and then you you helped others because by writing these books, by sharing the word, by speaking on podcasts, by speaking in public, by doing all these things you're actually helping people and, and helping people get through their life challenges. You know, mm -hmm. if, if they see that you went through what you did and you got through it, then it's, it's testimony right there. It, it shows proof that anyone can get through anything in life, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and they just have to have faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. You put all those things together <laughs> and you could do anything, you know, and I, I really think it's amazing. Now, where can people find your books if they wanted your books? They can find my books on Amazon for sure. And they are also on every online bookstore. Um, and they're also in Canada. Um, books a Million, um, Barnes and Nobles, um, Target, Walmart, you know, any place that sells books. And um, you can also go to my website and it gives you a direct link to Amazon. So you can just click on the link on my website and it will take you straight to the book. So you don't have to search for it. And my website is DebbieAdamsBooks.biz. Excellent. And you, and you, Excellent. Can, al you can also email me if you have any questions. And my email address is Debbie at debbieadamsbooks.com. Excellent. Now, when now if, on your website, do you have do you offer anything free for anybody or even like a sign up newsletter or something, any kind of service or something that you offer? If they will connect with me on my website, and I've got a little box that says connect with me, I will email them a copy of um, some of my writings um, that I started off with before I even started um, doing books. Oh, excellent. So we're going to put that in the description box so people know that and then they can connect with you because that this is, mm -hmm. you know, your story, your life has been an amazing journey and you have really done really some great things and you're continuing to do great things and perform miracles every day. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really, and I think it's amazing. Even today's discussion, I think brought so much inspiration to the table 
you know, and uh, I, I think people need to learn how to listen to their, their crown, their heart, you know, and, mm-hmm. and to go by what, you know, it's saying, because I think that's where it all comes from. You have to listen to your heart and just take some time out, you know, and not get so caught up with the materialistic world that we live in, but really take some time out to really either meditate or go in a quiet room, whether you're going to read the Bible or you're just going to close your eyes and you're going to kind of go inside yourself and try to, or just write in a journal or something to connect. Now, before we go, is there any is there anything that you did to help you connect better and and get those messages that you did from God? I did a lot of quiet time, as you talked about. And um, I also kept a journal and I would think that I wanted to pray about, you know, I would write them down in the journal. And anytime that that prayer was answered, you know, I would put a check mark by it. Mm-hmm. And I would also write down what God was speaking to me about each time that I studied his word. Oh, I like and, that. you know, that, that helped me a lot. And, you know, that will help anyone that is looking, you know, to find how to, you know, to get to where they need to be. I would suggest starting with a journal because that, that is what really helped me. Oh, that's great. Now, if if you had to give like three takeaways, three things you wanted to emphasize to the reader, to the listeners, what would you like to emphasize that you feel is important from today's conversation? First of all, just look around and try to find miracles in your own life because you might <clears throat> you might say, I don't have any. But there are there are some around. I mean, even if it's the birds above your head when you're outside, I mean, God keeps them flying around. So, you know, that's a miracle. But just just don't get caught up in this world. Just look for um, miracles from God, um, blessings from God. You know, I call it miracles. Some people call it blessings, you know, basically the same thing. Yeah. And um, then if God is speaking to your heart about doing something, it might not be writing a book. It might be starting a business. It might be volunteering at the hospital, whatever. Just ask him to open doors to show you that that's the right direction you need to go. Because God has a plan for everyone's life. Yeah. And whatever, whatever it is, you know, just go the direction that God is leading you. And the third thing would be that if you don't already know God, um, you know, just call out to him or find a friend that, you know, that goes to church. Yeah. And, you know, talk to them about who God is and how you can get him in your heart and, you know, for eternity. And you said three, but (laughs) the fourth one would be to um, read some good, you know, devotional books. Mm -hmm. And my my top two out of my three, my top two would be two good books to start with, The Divine Promises and The Straighten Your Crown. I love it. I love it. This is amazing. Oh, my goodness. You know, thank you so much for being on the show today. You are truly amazing. I love every time you come on, you just like brighten my day. You give me such great motivation. <laughs> you really do. And you're uh-huh. an amazing person. Thank you so much for coming on today. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Because don't forget, Debbie has her own podcast and all her podcasts are on her channel. You can just look her up. You could just type her name in. You could just, you could find her everywhere and she's on every platform. So look her up, look at her and see all the different um, podcasts that she's already recorded and get some inspiration and some motivation. And maybe you'll be the next person that has a miracle. So (laughs) listen to them and enjoy them and really soak them in. Thank you so much, Debbie. This has been wonderful. Thank you. I enjoyed it. You have a great day. You too.